Hi everyone, I'm Mike with Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the second part of the Shop Interface mini-series. Now in this episode I was going to show you how to automate adding all of your items to the shop at once. So let's jump straight in and start that. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to create a script for our buttons. So I'll create a new c -sharp script and we'll just call it item button. We'll open that up in Visual Studio, get rid of the start and update for now, along with the system namespaces. And we also need to be using our Text Mesh Pro namespace as well. Now we only need two, uh, two fields in this. We're going to need a public Text Mesh Pro UGUI for a button text. And we're also going to need an item that we will populate in via script later on. We also need two public methods. So that will be public void set UI and public void button pressed. Now for now, button pressed will just debug.log you have pressed on and then we'll pass in our items name simple as that and the set UI is no more difficult all that's going to do is it's going to set the button text dot text equal to our item name and that's our item button class completed so if we jump back over into unity what we can do we can add a button onto a content game object we see it snaps straight into place at the top like we'd expect we can then attach our item button to our button now what do we need to do we need to add a on click event we'll reference the button itself by dragging and dropping it in and in our item button we want to call button pressed and then finally we'll add a text a button text element into the button text field that we created and then we can just go ahead and make the button look a little bit nicer oh so let's go back into my UI I've got my generic buttons here so first of all we'll put zero into a Base. Just resize this a little bit and maybe a little bit thinner. That's about right. And then just to make it look a little bit nicer, we will change our transitions to sprite swaps. So instead of fading colours in between either highlighting and pressing, we can actually set different sprites. So I've just got my sprites here, so sprite 1, 2 and 3 will go into the bottom 3. Now just to show you what that looks like if we just play it. Uh, when I hover over you just get a bit of a highlight and when you click it, it goes like that. Why have I got an object out of... that's why. <laughs> Ignore that, I shouldn't have pressed the button. Now we can get started with the automation. What we can do, we can create a prefab of our button. So we'll just give it a name, uh, item button, and we'll drag and drop that down into our project folder about here. And then we can remove that from a hierarchy. Now we can create our shop manager. So we can create a new C -sharp script, item shop manager open that in Visual Studio never opens there we go and do what we always do get rid of that get rid of that and now we're gonna need in here a public item array for every one of our items that we want to be available in the shop 
we're also going to need a public game object which is going to be a button prefab and one more public game object and that's going to be our button container uh, the that's the content object that we created earlier now we'll put start back in and inside start whenever we load this object what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to iterate over every one of our items so we'll do a for each loop and we'll do for each item item in items we want to load a new game object geo by instantiating one of our button prefabs now that we've got that prefab we can set the parent of that object to be our button container dot transform next we need to get the item button reference from our game object so we'll do geo dot get component item button dot set ui so that will then take the item that we've just passed and set that button's text element to be the name of the item and finally we actually need to prior to setting the ui get component item button you could do this in one call but i can't be bothered uh, item button and we want to set the item equal to our current item so that should be everything for our shop manager so if we attach that script to our shop window like so we'll drag in our item button prefab to the prefab we'll put our content into the button container and then in our items if we lock the inspector and drag all three of our items into the array Theoretically, this should be working now. So if we run it, we should see our three items, uh, scroll, sword, and wooden sword, automatically appear. Let's give it a go. And there they are. Scroll, sword, wooden sword. And if we press, you can see you have pressed scroll, you've pressed on sword, and you've pressed on wooden sword. And uh, just to show you how easy it is to add extra ones, we'll just add one more item. What icons do I have? We'll do an axe. So I'll throw in axe. We'll unlock that inspector. Axe. Big axe axe. That'll cost a thousand. And we'll throw in our axe icon. Now that we have an axe in there, we can jump back over to our shop window and all we need to do is drag and drop that onto our items array, hit play, and just like that, we have an axe. How simple is that? And we'll leave it there for this video. Make sure you check out part three, where we finally get round to implementing all of the item's parameters and displaying them on screen and we'll also work on a simple buying mechanism wherein if you have enough gold as a player then you'll be able to buy if not sucks to be you <laughs> i've been mike for comp3 interactive i hope to see you again soon